Hello everybody and welcome to this process tutorial where I will show you how to create winter theme inspired jewelry with Shaper 3D. In this video I will start with the ideation phase in concepts, transfer the quick sketches to Shaper and use those as a visual guide for modeling and then showing you the process of with basic sketches and very simple yet effective modeling steps using quantity and randomization as a design tool to develop very quickly out of two simple building blocks, more interesting, more complex versions or interpretations. Before we get started, our scene as always should be in millimeters and we want to have all our snap guides turned on. Coming up with interesting ideas, no matter for design or art, is for some people a very daunting task. But developing ideas is actually a process. There are steps you could follow and make use of as a guide to discover actually creative possibilities. So what you see here is concepts, which is my favorite ideation sketching tool on the iPad. It works like Illustrator, but looks like Photoshop. It is super amazing and it's a perfect companion when working with concepts. This is an eight and a half by 11 inches page. I wrote down the theme and I captured not only the designs, but with all the arrow lines, I also marked the flow of these ideas. So you can see how I developed all those slowly. So my first idea was I used a disc and then cut spheres out, kind of like inspired by snow landscape. Snow obviously has snowflakes. So I used the same disc idea and cutting the shape of a snowflake out. Removing the disc, but then putting it kind of like a stone setting at the center, being inspired by the snowflake. At that point, then I didn't really like this idea anymore. And I thought, well, what can I do to make this less generic? One design strategy is Take a look at all the visual elements you have. Here we have a stone at the center and branches and a circular array around it. Abstract it and recombine them differently. This is then what I did here. Some branches go down, some branches go up. This then led to this idea, kind of like a top-down mirror version. And from there, I jumped back one more time doing the circular idea with the end of a branch cut out at various positions because the idea of jewelry making is also making multiples making tiny variations so they're not all the same and it's um, a very interesting process to do besides the disc and the branch I also then thought of kind of like this pyramid element which led to this which then led to another variation and then I added actually these parts to it which then at the end resulted to this so I'm jumping here between an earring to a brooch for something that's more decorative I'm not sure yet where even it could be used and at the end well, what about we make a landscape where everything is out of wire? So I started with, with pressed metal, switch over to cut metal, went over to soldered wire. Okay, all this we can export. We use JPEG, the whole page. The image can be downloaded since I'm providing this. Let me go export this as an image, save this to the location where we want it. Mike is here, the Shaper iCloud folder. Then I go to Shaper, go to import folder. Here is my image. 
And there we are. Before I continue, I want to bring this page scale wise into something that is more usable. On the page, everything was sketched simply as an idea without dimensions. This earring idea, the earring maybe should be around one centimeter. So somewhere I just draw myself a circle. Let's see how big this is. 26 millimeters for the radius. It should be one centimeter diameter, so five millimeters. There we can see this page is actually pretty big. Very good. So we go to scale. Scale this one down. This starts to look actually very good. Go to transform and I will move it to there and bring this one over. So we, as you can see, we work in millimeters again. All the grid stuff is turned on. It's perfect. And now I will use the grid as a layout to put down my individual elements and then create the variations. Let's start with this one first, since it's an interesting study to explain this process. It's a circle. Then we have the branch in it. Then the branch connects to the circle in three different ways. So I could draw three individual sketches or I simply build two basic modeling elements and then create variations. Here is now the circle and somewhere next to it, I will draw my branch, not on it. Go down, I go down. Here is the bottom part, then if I go to here, I can draw these lines to there, draw a line, draw a line, connect this, this goes down, and there we are, very good. I use the squares also to draw perfectly 45 degree diagonal lines. This is two millimeters. This is two millimeters. This is 1.414. Very good. So let's select this and we extrude this one down to this. We extrude down one millimeter. Select both, go to top. I will make a copy, move it to here. And this I will bring over. There we are, very good. So there's actually number one. So let's go, you and you, make a copy, bring this over and move this to here, to there. To there okay so here in this version I will simply move this all up by minus two here over to there yeah like this And what do we do with this one? We bring this one to there and we make a copy and bring one down. Very good. And this I will move up half a millimeter. Yes, half a millimeter. Very good. So you see how easy it was actually based on the initial sketches and then making some basic models to very quickly develop some, some variations. The element on the far right actually looks interesting. It's going to somewhere. The one 
the second from the right, yeah, the second from the left is also balanced and the one on the left looks maybe a little bit empty. I can continue and select all my copies. Uh, which one is actually the, oh, there's the first one, there, there we are. And all those, I will make another copy and simply move down. So I have my initial copies here too. This is a wonderful way how to very quickly produce actually multiples. I don't remodel stuff, I just copy and then do all my work. This I would like to cut out of this. So I select both and then use this as the cutting tool. There we are, very nice. This actually does not work in this case because right there an edge of this snowflake is right at the center of um, the cylinder. This is also not really very good geometry for casting or manufacturing in general. So we should try to adjust this a little bit. I simply move this down 1.5 so I can select this and extend it by one millimeter. And here then I move this all back up 1.5. There we are. Very good. Now there you see this actually worked better. Let's go to here. Always double tapping on the object, subtract. This actually doesn't make sense. So I have this big one that cuts a deeper groove out and then I have the smaller one. Mm, I will select this and this and here. This one actually, this face, that has to go back to there, 3.8. I think that will do it. So you and you cut. Very good. Oh. There we are. And then you and you, one more cut there. So we have an interesting stepping as you can see in there. The beautiful thing of direct modeling in Shaper is we are not finished there. We can now go ahead and play with everything. Adding fillets to it one millimeter to make things rounded in certain areas opening it here, giving this a rounding. Adjusting the height. See, so all this can, can be worked on. Pretty awesome. We can also modify these values or even delete these features. We just added it to the geometry. Very nice. Something what we did here also with this stepping, we could even go ahead and rotate it. So this face rotate a little bit and then we do the same with this face. 
to make everything not look so people call cat modeled more a little bit organic natural very good so you see how out of a circle and then a branch we started modeling very quickly four different versions so you see it's not really a matter of coming up with this great genius idea it's really more about trying to see potential creating identifying building blocks and then turn your brain off copy and paste and do stuff very often this process really actually helps and can create quite interesting designs let's look at this element here this one and this one we want to create something and possibly this so i will zoom to here this looks a little bit bigger i will draw myself just a line here to measure this so three centimeters okay very good so i draw a line three centimeters one line here too i could close this there we are very nice and bring this over so now we only have just one half go to here draw a line seven millimeters you will see me very often just drawing lines next to summer so i have a, a reference and i am as you can see now just working on one half of the element so here i'm going to just delete this and bring this over to there what's the angle here 116 okay we could try to do things more cleanly so i just want to have a nice even element so this is three units to there and four units to there it's make this five so one down one two three four five very good this means that this now can go a little bit further to there you see that i did not put it right onto it i let it overlap that's on purpose very good somewhere here we have another element there and there these are all drawn with perpendicular constraints to it so when i lock this and select this you see when i move this everything rotates really nice and easy trick using the sketch solver and then very quickly exploring various ideas we will select all this one more time before we continue let's specify this to be one millimeter is very thin let's go with two millimeters which means that this also has to go out a little bit more so what i showed you right now is one of the pitfalls doing sketches when we can zoom in so much because on the screen this looks really big but if I would make this out of metal, this is very fragile. We make a copy, move this one down. How many do we have there? Three, very good. Two, three, there we are. So, and then the one in between is actually longer. we can also set those to be parallel or perpendicular so after we made a copy of a sketch you see the constraints are gone and then ideally we want to 
put those in afterwards. This goes to here. Very nice. There we are. To make things a little bit more clean and organized, I will now push actually these endpoints onto this line. There. The main reason why I did this is I can select this, this and say 1.5 or uh, 2 millimeters, U and U, 2 millimeters. So there's a little bit of order right to it. Also here, all those, they can be parallel. So there, everything is perfectly at the same line. This I move a little bit to there. So it looks like a middle one that's very long, a top piece that is shorter, and then a smaller one that's very short. And then here we have another of those diamond pieces sticking out. Can select this and make a copy, move this over to here. Then it's very easy counting. There we are. So this bring over, bring to here, lock this, we can lock those angles as you can see, and the only problem that you see now when I move this, all oh, this is actually happening. Um, Give this a dimension, this a dimension, this a dimension. So we're locking the um, specific points. And now you see it there. I can rotate it nicely. Unlock this. Double tap. I can move this around. Very good. Lock this again. Go to this point. There, I can move this. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, zoom out a little bit. Looks like we're getting close to what we want. So now it's time to complete our design, make it full again. Bring this over, this I bring back. This I will unlock and move it a little bit over. And I will do a lot of mirroring now to do this. Go to Transform, Mirror, and see all these lines here I could uh, select, but then, hey, there is a, a mirroring already happening. So before I do this, I will draw myself here a line first. This is my mirroring axis. So I go to transform, mirror. So I'll select items to mirror and select the plane. So this is my mirroring object. This is my plane. And now I select all these lines. And done. There we are. Very nice. Here we have a good, um, bring this point, move this in a little bit. Same here, there, 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 and there. And we do the same there one time and there. Very good. So, and also here. Now all these lines perfectly overlap. To make these points actually perfect, just so you know, we can select this mirroring line and lock it. Now I select this point and this point. They're a little bit off, as you can see, symmetry to this line. Let's do the same to these two points. Symmetry to 
this line. So when I move this down there, you see what's happening. Pretty good, no? So the symmetry command is very useful when you want to have elements update all the time. So this we will lock. This we will lock. Particularly here in this case, this is going to be very useful. These points symmetry to there. And these points symmetry to there. And these two points symmetry to there. And when I select this and move it, there you see the other one rotates. Very nice. Good. Let's turn this into an earring. We also need to have a loop on top. A circle one millimeter is not really much. So to to put a loop through two millimeter radius, it's four millimeters diameter. Two millimeter is not really much. One point five. This is this is sufficient. I bring this to here. You can use the offset. Create an offset. Half a millimeter. Let's go with one. There we are. And select this, this, this. All these shapes now I can select. And give this a flat pattern look. Cool. Okay, so this is actually my, my first idea. Now I'm going to show you how, after all the sketching, and you will understand also why I created the sketch that way, we can now continue and create more variations to it. I will add another element to the sketch right here, where these two things intersect. There we are. Very good. Maybe, yeah, tail there. Okay, so you, 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 you. I select only the pieces outside. Just those. Okay. And those are extrude up by, go with a millimeter. Then I select the elements inside. And go up two millimeters. And then all this I select and join. Very nice, no? Now oh, there we have version number two. But hold on, let's undo this one step. And rather do this. Oh, uh, unfortunately, I just deselected the objects. So careful double tapping. And we move this over, 44. So now I can go ahead, do the same here again. All those I join, union. And here, what I will do, this I simply move down half a millimeter. So these elements are not at the bottom, but more centered. And join union there. Very good. And then this 
I will bring over to there. So there's my my variation for it. Okay, very nice. I hope you start understanding how how effective actually this process is to develop very quickly interesting patterns and from these patterns then we can create more elements. So I will do one last. I will continue using the sketch. So here I will draw a line there and then simply select all this again go up by one millimeter look from the bottom select everything there we can also do it this way so 1.5 but instead of cut join there we are go to the top view select this then I bring this over to there. Not necessarily sure how this will work out, but that's the exciting part of it. Simply we are trial and error. We bring this over to here. Then this we can move down. There's number one. Very good. copy this we rotate bring this down now we have to be careful with the grid how we we do everything So we can get, so we'll actually, I go back to this view. So, okay, so I see it. Now one, two grids. So this was actually two millimeters, two millimeters, very good. Select both and this copy, move this over to there. Select this and this, copy, bring this over. Ah, and we see like the, the center pieces actually start touching each other. Maybe a 45. Now this is like all, all too tight. So the piece I have there, that actually does not really work. But what we could try as one last element is so this for example didn't really work out however this can work out so we join all this together bring this back creating an, an order to our presentation that's very often also very helpful to keep your your chaos under control trust me I will select all this, all those elements. And do a cut if I could. Actually, I want to make a, I want to make a, a multiple and do a, rad, a radial array. We can select this one. So instead of rebuilding everything, hey, here, let's do this. And double click it. No, I move my widget here to the circle. You see how it's selected and copy, rotate it 180. Very good. Select those two copy 
45 and then I just the intersect there. Well, let's do this. 45. Oh yeah, 45 were actually kind of silly. So we have 360 divided by six. So 60 and 120, there we are. So not too bad there, they're slightly are overlapping. So what can we do to make this a little bit more, more interesting? Well, this one and this one. So we can push down a little bit. So the other two are a step higher and then all those are being selected and joined. And then also here, we bring this one down. So this is actually a pretty, pretty big piece. Okay, very good. So you see, you could essentially really spend hours and hours and hours playing and tinkering uh, with, with this. You saw, um, to review this a little bit, we did a basic circle and like a branch element, and then we extruded the geometry, m copied, moved them around, recombined them. Then we did another sketch, used also the symmetry command and the mirroring. We only drew one half of it. Then we used the same idea of more modeling, building parts and then doing variations. This is also why I do not trim the sketches because I can, let's say, this element here I don't like. It's very easy to adjust without having to repair the sketch. That's one of the main reason behind it. And the sketches continue being changed. Like when I added this line to it or added these two lines to it. So it's, I'm not making for each object a new sketch. It's just basically a playground of lines from which then I try to develop all the different forms and explorations and continue the solid modeling, making variations, etc. And all these patterns, then basically you see there, this can then be produced with this very basic application of sketching and solid modeling. And after all this is done, now, now comes really the interesting part, prototyping. We can send this to a plastic printer to do a quick um, prototype. We can also use this as plastic. For plastic, we want probably thicker materials um, thicknesses, or we could send it to services like Shapeways, who then can produce metal prototypes for us, or if we only need 10 or 20, we just order the quantity instead of going, um, printing those in wax, casting them ourselves, which is very time and labor intensive.